Hey, what's up guys? Victor from Cyborg for Life. Hope you guys are doing really well. So lately I've been getting a lot more questions on the pain of the limb lengthening surgery. And although I already did a video on this a while back, I decided to revisit a few different scenarios and topics on things like the pain that you might feel during the night, uh, after doing physical activity, when you get your devices removed, and you know, the potential pain that might come up long term down the line, okay? So what about the pain during the night? Well, it's gonna be a little bit more noticeable than the aches and pains that you feel during the day. And this is just because of the fact that your body has more sensation during the night and you're gonna be more aware of it, okay? But based on the recent contact that I've had with you know leg lengthening patients uh, that are currently undergoing it, they're saying that their pain levels are like a zero to four out of 10. Guys, that's really, really good considering what happened to them. I mean, they literally had their legs broken and hardware put in. But you know, take it with a grain of salt because everybody's pain tolerance is different, okay? However, I do recommend that if you have an internal nail and you do have pain at night, trying to use something like a compression sleeve or a molded cast, which is what I had, my doctor made me one, um, it will really help to reduce the inflammation and the swelling, which is gonna help your pain levels go down and you'll be able to rest easier. Now, if you have an external fixator, I just recommend trying to stay as stable as possible and letting the pain pills do their work, okay? It's really gonna be, you know, just kind of like getting through the first few weeks and then the pain levels just drop off dramatically, okay? So what about the pain that you feel during physical activity? All right, so you gotta understand that right after surgery, your leg's gonna be like super sensitive to every little movement you make, okay? And this is because they went through a ton of trauma and it's gonna take some time before that pain level drops off. But when you do start doing things like, you know, long distance walking, jogging, running, hiking, pick up ball games, working out with weights, things like that, that's gonna depend on a whole nother set of factors like did you have an internal nail or an external fixator? Uh, did you let your bone fully heal and consolidate or is it still remodeling the bone cortices, okay? So it's not a clear cut yes or no answer of whether you're not gonna feel pain in the bone itself, okay? It's gonna depend on what factors are there, which, which ones aren't, okay? But let's dive into the details. So long distance walking. I actually had to think back to this the other day because somebody asked me about it, but when I was able to fully weight bear, it wasn't the bone itself that hurt. It was more so the muscles in the calf um, and the ankle and foot because of the fact that, you know, they weren't used to the stress placed upon them. So um, it was sore for, you know, three to five days or, you know, a couple weeks, but two, three, four weeks down the line, I didn't feel that pain anymore, guys, okay? Because of the fact that I gradually build up my tolerance. And that's what I recommend you do because it's not gonna necessarily be the bone that hurts. It's gonna be like the soft tissues surrounding this and stabilizing the bone, okay? So you gotta build up slowly, all right? Um, when it came to jogging and running, I think I was able to kinda, you know, I think it was like about eight to 10 months post-op before I was, I was comfortable enough to do it without feeling pain, okay? In fact, I actually did a photo shoot about a year after uh, the surgery because I, you know, I didn't really feel any bone pain. So I, I actually did a 40 yard dash for the, <laughs> for the photo shoot, but I knew that that was okay because it was just a linear you know, run. But when I, if I was to start doing things like agility moves with that device still intact, I could probably have gotten a you know, potential fracture from the amount of torque on the leg. So I didn't, but I definitely felt it in the muscles more, okay? I actually also went hiking on the Smoky Mountains when I lived in Tennessee. And uh, this had to have been about, what, three years or so after getting the device removed. And uh, I had no pain in the bone at all, okay? Um, it was, there was some soreness and stiffness in the muscles because, I mean, that's what, that was expected. I mean, I was walking on weird rocks and weird ways and different angles, so. Um, and this was the same for like playing a pickup game of football with friends. I mean, American football, that is. <laughs> because of the different angles and stuff, the stabilization of those muscles just had to recalibrate and get back up to speed, okay? Um, when I got back to the gym, I, in my opinion, getting back to the gym and doing leg workouts when your foot is in constant contact with the ground, this is the safest out of all type of like running, jumping and stuff like that because it's a closed, con closed chain movement and your leg is gonna be able to be mechanically loaded to increase the bone uh, density a lot more efficiently without you know uncontrolled ballistic movements that are more dangerous, okay? So in my opinion, leg workouts should happen a lot sooner than things like sprinting and jumping, okay? All right, because those, that took closer to probably two years or after surgery, which is like a year after getting the device removed for me to feel comfortable enough to do it without any problems, okay? I probably could have done it sooner to sprint and jump, but I just didn't, okay? I just wanted to be safe. I didn't want any, you know, to take any back steps on my rehab, okay? Um, but my overall advice is that when you do physical activity, just to warm up, okay? Because the soft tissues, they, they just underwent like a big tug of war with your bone <laughs> and they, you know, the bone won. So 
warm up, get blood into those tissues, make them nice and pliable and loose so that when you stretch them out, you're gonna get that, that flexibility back, okay? So is there any pain when you get your device removed? Well, there's a little bit of pain, but it's really not that bad. So I got my surgery in July of 2012, and I got my hardware out that following fall, I think it was September, October 2013. So just over a year later, and um, it was an outpatient procedure. I was in and out. I think I left that same day or maybe the next morning. I don't really remember. Uh, but I wasn't happy about them having to go back through the patellar tendon. I mean, it pissed me off to be completely honest with you. I mean, here I was, built up my knee strength, felt stable, felt strong, and then boom, they went back through that knee joint to pull that rod out, and I felt like I was back to square one. However, it wasn't as bad as I thought because, you know, within a few days I was stiff, yeah, and I couldn't really like kind of move my knee too much. Um, but I, uh, I started to use crutches to kind of get around and then um, I could walk fine. I could walk fine. The bone was stable, it was strong. And then week one, I used the stationary bike to you know, get some blood flow to the knee. And then um, you know, within two weeks, I was slowly trickled back into the gym. Didn't do any leg workouts till about a month later. Um, but you know, I was just being cautious because I didn't want to have any type of problem with that patellar tendon. I didn't want it like a knee rupture because that's one of the bodybuilder's worst fears because then you're, you're pretty much done. Your career's over. Um, so within a month or six weeks, I started adding weight to my leg workouts and I started to scale up from there, okay? Um, I basically used the same gradual rebuilding program um, after the first surgery, but this one was more brief, okay? So what about pain long-term down the line? Well, I always say that if you have a good experienced surgeon and you worked really hard at your rehab, you will not have any long-term pain complications, okay? Uh, in my mind, I think that a successful surgery is based on 10 to 30% of a good doctor and device and the other 70 to 90% is based on a compliant patient. So it's not a one-man show by any means, guys, okay? All right, now do I have any pain from my surgery? Uh, and the answer is no. I absolutely have no bone pain or soft tissue pain from my limb lengthening surgery eight years ago. But I had a great doctor and I worked incredibly hard at my physical therapy and I rehabbed and rebuilt uh, properly to get me back up to speed. Now, can you have any type of long-term pain? And the answer is yes, of course you could. Okay, if you didn't regain your range of motion in a timely fashion, let's say six months to maybe a year after your surgery, then of course you could have all kinds of musculoskeletal problems. So definitely, definitely, definitely listen to what your doctors say, uh, do the exercise that your PTs tell you to do, have an effective rehab and rebuilding program in place to get you back up to where you were before the surgery and you should be good, okay? I've talked to several successful limb lengthening patients and they all have these elements of success into place. They worked hard, they picked a good doctor, and uh, everything turned out well. But there's always gonna be people who disagree with me and that's perfectly fine. But anyway guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, be sure to subscribe, and until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out.